Hi there, my name is Andrew Renko, this is Studio Creative Records and today I want to show you a sound design that I did for the original video, the link to which you'll find into the description. Voice over and music will be much quieter than sound effects in order for you to hear the sound design. The first modern humans that roamed the earth were nomadic hunters and gatherers that moved from place to place where food could be easily found and animals could be hunted. But all that changed about 10,000 years ago, when humans learned how to farm and domesticate animals. This allowed people to move and settle in one place together. These places became cities, one of the greatest human achievements that completely changed our world. Urban life began some 6,000 years ago, and in certain places, thousands of people gathered together to form the Earth's first cities, while the rest of humanity continued to live in villages or nomadic camps. The world's first known city is Çatalhöyük, a settlement in Anatolia, south-central Turkey. Çatalhöyük had mud-brick houses built closely to one another, and the inhabitants mainly hunted or gathered their food. But it was recently discovered they raised animals and stored surplus grains. It was the very first place where surrounding villages came together, formed a central location and started urban civilization that dominates the world today. The ruins of Çatalhöyük show agricultural techniques of some of the human race's first farmers. But it wasn't easy for them because open and fertile fields were not available and the terrain of any late Stone Age environment would have been overgrown with trees, brush and weeds. These early farmers would cut down what they could and then set the area on fire. It leveled the ground for planting and the ashes from the burned plants fertilized the field. This ancient agricultural technique, known as slash and burn, is still used by farmers today. Planting in the fields was done by hand since the plow had not been invented yet and early farmers likely used sticks or primitive hoes to dig up the earth before planting seeds and then covering them with the burned soil. After they covered the seeds, the Çatalhöyük farmers didn't just pray for rain. They had already discovered irrigation and used simple techniques to supplement rainfall, ensuring a successful harvest. When it came time to harvest, these ancient farmers used sickles that were made from obsidian, which is a naturally occurring volcanic gas formed as an extrusive igneous rock. It was plentiful in the regions of Çatalhöyük and toolmakers could flake the obsidian and achieve sharpness that was superior to steel. Çatalhöyük had no streets or footpaths. In fact, the houses were built right up against each other and the people who lived in them would travel over the town's rooftops and enter the homes through a hole in the roof and climb down a ladder. This city was the most advanced at the time. But another group of people would appear in the 4th millennium BC and would take the development of cities to a whole new level. The Sumerians were people who dominated a place called Mesopotamia, a Greek word meaning between rivers. It's an historical region of Western Asia that lies within the Tigris-Euphrates river system. They built one of the greatest cities in the world and a civilization that flourished between 4100 to 1750 BC. Uruk, the ancient city of Sumer, was settled in ancient Mesopotamia between 4500 and 3100 BC. Uruk's rise to prominence happened around 3800 BC. By 3200 BC, it was one of the largest cities in the world with a population of over 40,000 people. It was a powerhouse of technology, architecture, culture, and became the main force of urbanization and state formation. The Sumerians were responsible for many important innovations during this time, including inventing timekeeping by dividing 12-hour periods into day and night. They could mass-produce bricks building homes and built the first known schools where they invented and practiced mathematics and a system of writing called cuneiform, a collection of simple pictographs. 
written on clay tablets, which they used to date the activities of the community, mostly records of what they bought and sold. But the key thing that made this city flourish was its prime location. Uruk was built on the eastern banks of a channel of the Euphrates River, around an imposing religious structure called the White Temple and the Great Anu Ziggurat. The flat plains offered plenty of sun without any trees and provided settlers with fertile soil. Flooding of the rivers in Uruk was a major problem during the rain season. The Sumerians developed hydraulic engineering, learning how to channel water, which also brought silt, a mixture of tiny rocks and rich fertile soil, from river to farmland by using canals and ditches. The inhabitants of Uruk also dug out huge storage basins to hold water supplies. These early irrigation techniques increased the amount of food the farmers were able to grow, and Uruk continued to grow. Villages were established and soon grew into towns. Along with the development of city building and agriculture, societies began to become more complex. New technology was invented such as the plough, potter's wheel, loom and metallurgy. Settlers would buy, sell or trade goods from another town. Travelling between town to town was difficult in the beginning and there was a need to have paths that were easy to travel on. But during heavy rain, these roads would become hard to travel on and wagons would get stuck in the mud. The roads in Mesopotamia were stone-paved streets connected to convenient places. Because they could be made of stone, they were easier and quicker to travel on. The Sumerians had good brick-making skills and could form identical mud bricks for buildings and streets. After the bricks were dried, they would be set in place using bitumen, a natural sticky black substance used in asphalt that oozed out of the ground or near springs at various locations in the ancient Middle East. This technique was so advanced at the time that centuries would pass before asphalt would be used in Europe or America. But the Sumerians could build more than just buildings and streets. A good city is a protected city. And from early history, defensive walls were a necessity for a city protecting it from an invasion. Walls began to rise around cities throughout Mesopotamia shortly after urbanization began and included gates, watchtowers and a ditch that ran on the outside of the wall that could be filled with water. Defensive walls continued to improve and cities like Babylon built the most impressive walls ever seen. King Nebuchadnezzar II had three massive walls built around Babylon that were 40 feet tall, 12.1 meters, and so thick that chariots could race around on the top. Another ancient remarkable city is Barcelona. Emperor Augustus and the Romans set up a colony named Barcino during 15 to 10 BC on the easily defended location of the coastal plain between the Colserola Ridge and the Mediterranean Sea. During that time, it had 1,000 inhabitants and was surrounded by a defensive wall one mile, 1.5 kilometers, in diameter. Inside, the city had a Roman grid street design, which it still has today. There are many different street designs, but the grid design is the greatest asset to modern cities and the most important part of urban development because it's easier to get from one place to another and with more than one way to reach the same destination. The Romans were also very famous for their network of roads they built outside of the city across the Roman Empire. The Roman road system was an outstanding transportation network and they built 50,000 miles, 80,000 kilometers of hard surface highway that was mainly used for military reasons. Through the centuries, the population of Barcelona continued to grow and by the 19th century, the population density of the city was the highest in Spain. But working conditions were miserable. Sewage was out of control, water was dirty, and the city was struck by a series of epidemics and riots. By 1854, the wall that kept everyone crammed together was one of the most hated structures in Europe. The Spanish government gave the people permission to take the wall down, and immediately, townspeople grabbed crowbars and pickaxes and tore it down, and took 12 years to completely remove. Walls as a defense in cities would become useless anyway because of the invention of artillery. After the walls in Barcelona were ripped out, 
the Spanish government hired an architect named Ildefonso Sedan, who was horrified by the conditions of the working class in the city. His new extension of the city would be a model of orderly, clean, safe, and hygienic urban living. Sardar was one of the first urban planners who studied the way residents lived in urban spaces. He designed the block structure while ensuring every citizen had enough water, clean air, sunlight, ventilation, and space. Each 20-square block district is a self-contained area with its own shops, hospitals, parks, and plazas that were spaced evenly throughout the city, giving everyone equal access. Streets were built 65 to 100 feet wide, 20 to 30 meters, to allow pedestrians and the transportation of goods free movement. Green spaces were also built in the center of each block and were gardens designed to provide recreational spaces for residents, a place to enjoy the outdoors away from the roads. The Roman grid street design was very efficient in ancient times but it has caused problems in modern-day Barcelona with the large amount of cars creating air pollution. Now the city has begun testing what are called superblocks in the city center. These are groups of two or more blocks that sit together and vehicles are unable to drive here. Without cars, there is more room for people to walk on the street. And more people on the street means more businesses for the shops located in these superblock areas. Trees are planted along the roads in areas called green spaces that help cut down air pollution. Through different stages of urbanization, it has been discovered that people love to live in big cities that have the best of both worlds. Huge parks, open landscape, shopping malls, and other conveniences. Unlike other cities of the past, regulations and zoning were created that split urban areas away from city centers. The government of each city divides the land into areas called zones. Zoning regulates the use of the land in cities and keeps residential districts where people live away from commerce districts and industrial districts. So what does the future hold for new cities on Earth? And what will we see? In 2015, more than half the world's population lived in urban areas. And by the year 2050, two-thirds of humanity will call a city home. Smart cities would use new technological tools to make the lives of its inhabitants easier and more enjoyable. Things like the 20,000 sensors throughout the city of Barcelona that connect to an application that and more enjoyable. Thing Things like the 20... Things like the 20,000 sensors throughout the city of Barcelona that connect to an application that tells you what parking spots are open and where to park, reducing traffic jams, wasted time and air pollution. Where some ancient cities took centuries to build, new modern cities may also use 3D printing technology like Dubai that printed a university, research center and some hospitals in only 40 days. Dubai just printed the world's largest 3D printed two-story building. The walls were printed in just two days and the process used half the number of construction workers and generated 60% less waste. With new technology and new science in urban planning, cities of the future will be perfect places for humans to live in. Give us a like if you enjoyed this video and let us know if you want to see a video about future cities.